Hey everyone, it's Charlene. Today we're going to take a look at the My Monthly Hero January kit. This is such a fun kit and I'm going to show you how to make two cards with it and I'm going to show you how to ink blend and create dimension with die cuts. So the kit comes with those red iridescent gems and then four ink cubes and key lime fizz, taffy, green apple, and cup of joe has this beautiful four and a quarter by five and a half fancy cover plate die, three coordinating frame cuts, and a key fancy die. And then lastly, there is a six by eight clear stamp set, which is just gorgeous. So let's get started. So I'm just starting out here and I'm gonna cut out the large rectangle and then I'm also going to cut out the keyhole. So I like using my grid transparency when I'm trying to line things up. I'm gonna do a second cut where I'm using the large rectangle and then I am going to center the key die in there as well. And here's a little tip. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make sure that the key is cut out behind that key hole. So just line, lining things up with a grid transparency and then I come in with my already cut piece just to make sure it all lines up. Off camera, I did cut out six of the keys because I'm going to layer them so they are double layered. And here I'm gonna ink blend each of the keys in a different color. So I'm using Simon Says Stamp and Bubblegum for one key, then Cheeky for another, and then Melon for the third key. I really like ink blending die cuts. I think it gives the die cuts a really interesting look. They're kind of darker in certain places and lighter in other places, just because of how the ink is rubbing onto the die cut. I'm just using a silicone mat, and that's what I've been using lately in order to do my ink blending. And I bought a really large one and I cut it into several pieces so they all fit my Misty and I can use them for all kinds of different things and they're easy to move around. But you want to make sure that you've got a pretty decent all over color of the ink when you're ink blending on die cuts um, and it can take a little while. So now I am taking the back piece where I have the key cut out of it and I'm going to ink blend that in again in the bubblegum melon and the cheeky and I am just going back and forth. I'm going in with each color and I don't need to worry about the edges because the only thing that's going to show through is what's behind the keyhole. So that's really where I'm focusing my blending. The bubblegum is a really pretty color, but you do need to put quite a bit of layers and ink down in order to get kind of a solid color on that. So now in a mini mister, I keep water and perfect pearls. I use this frequently. And so I've just sprayed it out on my silicone mat and I'm going in and I'm using my fan brush and I'm just flicking that on the back of my finger. So then I get those really pretty iridescent shiny spots from the Perfect Pearls, but I also get the water reactivity from the ink. So it creates a really interesting effect. Off camera, I did go ahead and also use some of the Perfect Pearls water on the top panel where the keyhole is cut from. So off camera here, I have cut out a piece of craft EVA foam so that I can get some dimension. And I'm just going in with my dot runner and I'm being careful to go all the way around the keyhole because I wanna make sure that that part is really well adhered to my card panel. And then once I have that done, I'm just gonna use the dot runner to go all the way around the edges and then I'm gonna adhere it to my card panel. I like to add dimension in my cards. It really adds a lot, and you can do this with Crafty VA Foam. You could also do it with multiple pieces of cardstock that you've cut the keyhole from. Either way, it's going to create a really nice look. It's going to give your card just a lot more wow factor because it kind of 
pops up. So I really like how it looks. I definitely recommend adding dimension to your cards. Yes, it does make it a little bit more difficult to send them in the mail. Um, so sometimes I do flat lay cards, but I, I really love the way that this dimension looks. So I'm coming around with my scissors and I'm just going to go ahead and trim off that excess EVA foam that's peeking out from around the sides. If you guys are enjoying this video, please do hit the like and subscribe button as well as that notification bell. It does help me to bring you more crafty content in the future and I appreciate it. Okay, back to the card. So once I get that craft EVA foam down and adhered, I'm coming in again with the dot runner and you could use liquid glue too. You don't need to use dot runner. Um, I just really like to use the dot runner when I am working with the craft EVA foam. And so now I'm using the corner of my score buddy. And I do this often when I have a full panel that I want to cover up because then I know it's going to get nice and straight in the corners and on the edges. And I'm just really loving how this is starting to look. I think this card is so pretty. So coming back in with the dot runner on uh, now I'm going to adhere my card panel to my card base and I'm using a top folding a two size card base that's four and a quarter by five and a half and again I'm going to bring in that score buddy because it just makes it so much faster and easier and then I know it's going to be nice and lined up and I kind of slide it from the edge so that it doesn't start sticking until I hit the side. Hopefully that makes sense. But then I'm just pressing it all down. Off camera, I did go ahead and stamp out the hello sentiment from the kit. I think it looks really cute down there in the corner with that little heart. I think they really nailed the um, scripty handwriting on these stamps. I did cut out a key in this really pretty glitter paper that's like a rose gold color and it comes in this um, paper pad that is from scrapbook.com. I'll link to everything down below in the description where all the all of my supplies are from in case anyone's interested. So I'm just making sure to get that nice and lined up and get it adhered inside of the cutout where the key is inside the keyhole. And once I get it in there, I'm actually going to come in with my bone folder so I can really make sure it's pressed down in there. The glitter paper is a little thin, um, so it actually looks really cool because it gives kind of a, even a little bit more dimension. So once I get that down where I like it, I went ahead and I glued all three of my key die cuts around on the card. Now you can do this any way you want. I find that if they're at an angle, it kind of creates a more interesting look to your card. I had originally intended to do them sort of straight um, on the vertical and then on the horizontal on top. And I didn't really care for how it looked. I thought it looked better on an angle here. So getting those down, once I like where it is, I'm gonna go ahead and commit. And then I did save all of the little hearts from my die cut keys and I'm just doing a little bit of die cut inlay on these, but I'm going to save three of them and I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to ink blend those little hearts because I felt like my card looked like it needed just a little bit more. So I'm ink blending those again in the bubblegum cheeky and melon one in each color. And here's a little tip. If you are trying to ink up tiny little die cuts like this, just grab a piece of washi tape or post-it tape, whatever you have and put it on there. It makes it much easier because then your fingers aren't getting in the way and it's not moving around all over on your work surface, which is really nice. So making sure to get those nice and inked and I'm just doing kind of like a little tap and swipe motion. I find that that works pretty well for these small die cuts. And then I'm going to glue that down onto my card. I think that just added a lot. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments. So once I get that down, I am done with the card. It looks great. I went ahead and stamped a sentiment on the inside. And then I also used the little rose gold glitter paper heart that was remaining from the key cutout on the inside as well. 
So moving on to our second card, I really wanted to use this beautiful cover plate. I don't have a lot of cover plate dies at this point, um, but I definitely imagine I'm going to be getting more. They are just so pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of a A2 sized card panel. It's four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to cut that out with my die cutting machine. These look so pretty because they kind of cut, but not all the way through on different parts of where the cover or the, the inset little design is. They just look so gorgeous that in person, they're even prettier than on the video. So now again, I'm going to use the key hole to go ahead and cut out the center. Now I'm going to use the branch stamps that come in the stamp set. And these are really cool. They're layering stamps. So I'm using the taffy ink cube that came with the set and that's all I'm going to use. And this, this is a tip for you. You can do layering stamps with one color. You do not have to use multiple different colors unless of course you want to. It just is something you've got to play around with. You have to decide how many layers of color you want to do. So like on one of the stamps, you can do one layer. And then on the next stamp, you can do two layers. I found that I actually only needed to do one layer on each of these stamps. And I still felt like there was a nice amount of differentiation between the two stamp layers. I think it could have been even more pronounced, um, but I wanted it to be kind of this muted variations, kind of like when you're looking up at the leaves and you can sort of see the light filtering through. I think it looks really pretty. So I'm going to hold it up so you can get a kind of a better view there. I think that's gorgeous. So now I'm going to do these little like leaf vines. These actually are meant to look like they are going down the um, strings of the swing. And you're going to see in just a minute here, it'll make more sense. So I'm coming in again with the taffy and I'm making sure to get that nice and apply down to my paper. And now I'm going to do the swing and I'm actually going to stamp the swing in gold metallic pigment ink. Now this pigment ink is a little finicky to work with. I find that you definitely need more than one layer and then you have to let it dry because at first it kind of looks orangey, but once you let it dry, I don't know, something magical happens and it just takes on this really pretty gold tone. It's really nice. So you'll see with the double stamping here, it's going to be more solid and see how it kind of looks orangey. But once it dries, you'll see once I hold it up to the camera, it looks really nice. So now I'm coming in with the second layer of that vine stamp and I'm going on this one, I'm actually going to do a double stamping. Uh, I found that there wasn't quite enough dimension between the two colors for me. So I decided on this one to go ahead and do that double stamping. I think it looks so pretty. There's so many different ways that you could use these kinds of layering stamps. And I really like this kit. I think it's a nice kit. So coming in off camera, I did go ahead and stamp the branch. Um, and there's actually a layering stamp for the branch as well. I did not use both layers. I only used one. I used the more um, uh, varied, the one that looks like it kind of has little spots in it. So now I'm going to go ahead and stamp these cute little butterflies because I thought that the branch looked really cool with the addition of the little butterflies kind of landing and flying around on it. And I used a black pigment ink. So I am going to go ahead with my clear embossing powder and heat set because I'm accident prone. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you know that. And I don't want to stick my finger in the ink and smear it all over. And also I think the clear embossing powder, you know, it just adds a little bit of extra shine. And I did the same with the XOXO sentiment. Um, some kisses and hugs. I like that because just, these are kind of Valentine's day -y, but they can also be used for just, you know, a missing you card that you want to send to a friend or family. I think they're pretty versatile. So coming in there, I'm going to line up where I like 
the swing to be inside of the keyhole. And I'm not worried um, here because I'm just gonna trim off the edges of the paper using my mini trimmer. And you'll see later, I actually off camera trim this panel down even more because I wanted to give it some more dimension on the card base. But now I've taken my little branch die cut and I am coming in with some foam tape squares and I've just popped it up all over the place. You also could use a piece of crafty VA foam for that. I had just grabbed my little foam squares. And so you, I'm hanging it over here on top of the keyhole. So now you have the dimension of that branch along with the dimension of the inset swing inside of the keyhole. I think it looks awesome. So using some Simon System black, intense black ink here, I'm just coming in and I'm gonna stamp this sentiment on the inside of my card. I thought it was very sweet, sending loving thoughts. And I'm gonna go ahead and double stamp this. I usually double stamp when I'm using the intense black ink. Um, I don't always when I'm using the pigment ink. So it just depends, but when in doubt, having a stamping platform is so helpful to double stamp. So you can see off camera, I did trim around the edge and now my little branch is kind of hanging off so I think this adds a little bit more to the card. And then I'm just adhering this to a top folding A2 size card base. And, oh, ah, so pretty. Love how this came out. Even watching it now, I'm like, I wanna go grab the card and just look at it some more. <laughs> I don't know if that ever happens to you guys. Sometimes I just stare at my cards and I think, oh, I love how this came out. But there it is, guys. There is the finished card. I think that gold metallic pigment ink looks even better in person. It's so pretty. I hope you guys enjoyed these cards. I hope you'll make some cards and I hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time, happy crafting.